when you are hospitable, you as a tour operator, if you have that as a skill, you are able to go beyond the mindset of money, of how much your clients have paid. I know that we'll talk about passion, but this one, once you have that ability, then now your passion for the thing now keeps the drive. You know, you want to go out of your way to give the best of yourself to this your tourist, to this your client, to this your, yeah, of course, tourist talking about to operator. So a first thing to have as a as quality is to really be hospitable. Okay. All right. So um, can anyone become a tour operator? Because if hmm. we're all hospitable, then yes, we can all come into the business to try and do the tour operator business. Because I would say hmm. that Africans, we are all hospitable. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, I don't think so. <laughs> Most of us, yes, it's very, very, you know, it's easier said than done to say that Africans are very hospitable. But the truth about it is that when it has to do with that sector, so that industry, becoming a tour operator, it goes beyond just what we have as uh, the I mean, that's what we have as a definition for hospitality. You know, when we're talking about a store operator, we're talking about somebody who, who, in other words, gives his or her life for the stranger now, let me say, for the stranger, not just your tourist or whatever. Somebody that is totally a stranger you've never met from Adam. And then you are giving in everything, not just because of how much he or she has paid, to make sure he or she leaves this destination with a story to tell, a positive story to tell. It's not everybody that's got that quality. That one, I must be very frank, because even in the industry, I've got, I've, I have some people that are colleagues, but that found themselves into this because some, for some it has become a trend. We see you looking good, driving good car and looking corporate and traveling all over. So it is a lucrative business. I jump into it. But a client on ground complains of whatever and you are ready to lose it just because, look, do you take me as your house help or whatever is you understand what i'm saying i'm trying to bring it very low now like bring it home you, you know you would be like this is an african yes a tour operator but it's not ready to take it to the to, to, it's not ready to take this um tourist we call it in french caprice you know caprice is like you know the we you you, you get sometimes clients that are so Yes, you know, so Cap made. Caprice, can you their mind customer service sort of? That we are not good in customer service. People who are not really tour operators don't know exactly customer service and exactly. how to find clients. All right then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they are Africans, like you said, they are Africans, but they don't have that, and then they don't give the experience to that client. So it's not all of us that have got it. So for me, a tour operator must have that um that ability must be hospitable okay. yes that ability right. yes thank you very much all right cleo cleo is online now is, oh thank god <laughs> hello hello cleo hello hello Elizabeth. yeah cleo all right so um we're talking about the skills that a tour operator needs to have in this industry. Can you share your thoughts on it? The skill that a top person needs to have. Um, I believe that for operators, there is also a major aspect, which is organization anticipation, in addition to the experience. Okay. It's 
it's becoming family with these people, bringing them into your world, but being capable also in getting into their world and finding those questions that they're seeking answers for and making sure that no matter what the circumstances can be, no matter what the needs are, that somehow you are able to satisfy those needs and be able to have them feel at home. That is something because you know that Oh my God. Hey, uh, I think we are losing Cleo again. Hello, Cleo. Hello. That when you travel, you get homesick. And this company that is miles, hundreds and miles, hundreds of miles. Hello, Cleo. Is it possible to put your video off? Sometimes when your video is off, it helps your audio. Is it possible? <laughs> so um, as we so were, Cleo, okay, yeah, Cleo. Um, please. Saying that, um, not everybody can just wake up and open an airline. You know, an airline, is it's not just buying an airplane and just setting it there and asking people, okay, just get in. It's, a, it's, it's so many things at the same time that you have to manage. So the tour operator sector industry is an industry that has its own requirements and not everybody can do it. I may love foreigners, I may love people who, are, who have traveled to my country. I may have the will to make them feel at home, but that's not enough to become a tour operator and to be able to sell a destination and have people really be able to leave there with, wow, I visited this country and this is this, this is that. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's not easy. There are requirements and then there is continuous working and capacity building that helps the tourism sector to have the qualified tour operators that it needs so that a destination can be a wonderland, can be something that brings people, even if there are all kinds of major sites, without good tour operators, then those destinations would never be that to the greatness they have. This is what I can say, Elizabeth. All right. Thank, thank you very much for you. As for people, you need to be hospitable, and then you need to have organizational skills as well to give the best experience to your clients. Wow, that's great. Africa. West Africa. How do we do our packages? Our package stores. Do we do flexibility? Do we incorporate novelty? And do we incorporate synergy in our package stores? So when we're speaking of synergy between tour operators, bringing together Is this a novelty app where we get in touch with operators in the industry to bring together a tour? Or you just sit in your office and say, okay, I want my client to go to, um, okay, so Benny, for instance, I think, uh, well, Voodoo, Voodoo is a, 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 a tourist action. Exactly. We do love. Vodou Benin. Okay, so Vodou in Benin. Ola, you just sit in your office and just draw a package or draft a package because you know where Vodou is and you have a car that you can send uh, your client to without getting in touch with the people in Vodou. 
without working hard with the other agents in play. Is that what you do? Not at all. <laughs> that, that is not, thank you so much, Elise, but that is not what we do. Okay. Uh, for you to draw up a package, as you rightly said, in the first place, you have to know this package. Now you are conversant with the package, you know the, the, everything about the package that you need to know as a tour operator. Then you, for, before you get into drawing this um, package, you have to get in touch with the site. In, that, in the case of Voodoo Festival, which is every 10th of January in Benin, we have the organizers of this um, event, this festival. You need to get in touch with them to be able to have, you know, every year they have different things they put together. So you get the download, add it to uh, yours as a tour operator will now be, these people coming in, where is the, am I going to take the tour from? Of course, most times it will be at the airport and then the borders when we're talking about land, I mean, uh, 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 local transportation. So you have the borders and then, and then the land borders and then the airport. You draw your package, transportation, the whole logistics, the accommodation, then putting into place both the guides, uh, interest of the guide, and then the, the, the the sites that they are coming to see. If possible, when you're looking at a very big package, you get all of them to form a kind of a little committee to let everybody know what they're supposed to do and then what the overall cost is going to be. Then you attach the quote, of course, adding your margin. And then that will be what you will do before you even think of now, you know, putting it out there to for communication. If not, if you sit down in your office and put it out, they are going to come here and they will tell you at the Voodoo Center, you don't have a place to bring, you don't have space to put your clients on the DD. So, <laughs> you know, so it's to say that you don't sit down in the office to do that as a tour operator. You synergy with everybody that is involved in what you'll be offering, you know, like the how. You have to know your how and also your why. Why? Okay. Of oh, that uh, top package. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. Hello, Cleo. Hello, Elizabeth. All right. As a tour guide, looking at the new normal, or is it a new normal because of COVID 19? We have a new word called new normal of how we do our things. I know when the pandemic came up, tourism stopped altogether. But a point in time has to come where we need to start tourism again. How are we going to do this? How are we going to start tourism again with coronavirus lurking on our face? How do we incorporate the new norm? in getting our clients to feel comfortable to travel again. Uh, I believe that is a huge question and that the answer would bring it back to how are we living today? How is life going on today in our everyday ordinary lives? Because COVID is there and it's not impacting just on business or just on the tourism sector. It's interacting even with our everyday lives, with our families, with our friends, with our colleagues. So I, I think that when we take a look at this angle, it will be now having to see how are we going to start and what would be the, 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 the new restrictions or safety measures because there have always been safety measures in the tourism sector. When it comes to tour operators or when it comes to tour guiding, there have always been measures that we have taken in the past to make sure that 
while our tourists or our clients are getting this experience that they're safe, that they're eating healthy food, that they're eating foods that are, are not too new or strange to their organism so that when they're in the country, they would enjoy this. Oh my God. Well, we are losing you. Yeah. We are losing you again. Other things, but still have whatever on the ground visiting. There are still people. So for me now, can you? Oh, yes, yes, we can. Yeah. Hello, is it okay, Elizabeth? Yeah, it's okay now, Clue. So I was saying that um, for tour operators and tour guides. It's nothing too new because the safety of our clients, of the tourists, has always been something very important in our everyday work. Making sure that when they're in our country or in any other country, the food that they eat is safe, healthy, which means that well protected, making sure that they're not allergic to something, oh, again. making sure that the food isn't too strange for them. When we're on the ground, how do you interact with the community? What are the do's and the don'ts in the community? So safety, safety has always been something major. But now in COVID, when we're talking about COVID and our everyday lives. We're now going to take now something that has you think when you want to interact with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues. Okay, so we've lost Cleo again. Before Olama gives a take on this question i'd like to urge all of us because i see that it's almost tour operators who are on the platform today so we'll give a chance to four people to ask a question or contribute towards the topic at hand four people to ask questions or contributions to the topic at hand so hola hello hola, hola. Hello. Hola, you're on mute. Minute. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Your take on that. Hello. Okay. My take on on the um, new normal. The new normal on how to boost courage towards traveling again. Because without that, the tourism industry would, would be on the low for a very long time if we are accepting that the 19th is that now. Oh, okay. So, um, talking about the new normal with the presence of COVID-19, which for me um, has come to stay and of course will be taken as malaria at the end of the day, although the higher level of malaria the vaccine or the treatment of it is going to be out. And then, uh, like my, my um, like Cleopat rightly said, we have been thinking security measures and all that in the tourism industry. I mean, as tour operators, we've always put in a lot of stuff to make sure that your clients comes, eats well, and gets, gets back well. 
So with the new normal, with the presence of COVID-19, a lot of measures has already been put in place. For instance, in, in Benin, we do, uh, we just came back yesterday, we did adventure tourism into um, Dasa, which is about four, three hours uh, drive from Kotunu. And the normal 15-seater bus had to take just eight, eight uh, tourists, you know, assuring the, the, the one meter, the distance stuff. And then, of course, before going on, we will always have to wash our hands. Then we go travel with our sanitizers, with our, our mask, you know, on. And then uh, even when we get all the sites that we, uh, we always put in our packages, are sites that are security, I mean, that are, I mean, having that compliance, COVID-19 compliance, you know, on the top. We, we, we inspect, make sure that you, your hotels are, are you know, COVID-19 compliance, your, the restaurants where we go to eat, even in the sites. So, and as tour operators, we, are, we tried also to do, was to, to put up, put out um, adverts telling our clients that these are the things we've put in place. So when they go to travel with us, they are very sure that they are not, coming very close. We're not helping to propagate this uh, sickness. I mean, this, yeah, of course. So that has really helped to, helped us to see people coming out, though not in their numbers as before, but at least people, you know, gaining that confidence, you know, understanding that we are, we are, we are putting everything to make them be able to go and not be contaminated. So, for me, the new normal is tour operators, you know, sending the message across to their clients, making them know, in fact, them doing their homework very well, upgrading. If you come to my office, like if in, in front of my front desk, you will see we've put the glasses to separate. I, I mean, of course, you clean your hands and all that, get in, and then we've got certain sizes, and we've got the glass separators, you know, the clients, you don't, no matter how you try, you can't get closer to the front desk people and all that. So we, we did a video of all this, and we shared it and made our clients, you know, to gain their, their confidence, to make them know, I mean, it's safe to come and reserve and do whatever and, and do business again with us. And then we also made them see that these things are already in place in the places we're taking you to. So tour operators should, you know, get that message sent across. And of course, the business gradually will begin to come back. That's, what, that's my take on that. Okay, so the message needs to be communicated to the general public. Is so, there key? The operators that must survive need to do just that. Okay. I like the fact where you said you've used a glass to partition where your agents are and where the customer needs to sit. So at the end of I, I, I can even go and show you in the front desk. You're protecting your staff and then you're protecting the clients. The, the clients. Thank you so much. I hope uh, we have agents on this platform but i hope everyone picks and advises themselves on this we shouldn't sit down and wait for COVID 19 to be over before we restart our business we restart the no. with all the protocols involved all right i have Ahmed online so i'll give Ahmed a chance to contribute or ask a question hello and whilst you were talking about the adventure tourism and the hours yeah. from Kutonu to uh, Dasa, right? Yes, Kutonu to Dasa. Okay, so Dasa, is it, is it part of the name? Yeah, yes, Dasa. <laughs> Dasa is part of Benin. Dasa is in the central part of Benin. What you know, know 
skilled country. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me let let me. Country itself. <laughs> okay, okay. Let, let me let me tell you one. You know, Bene, I got the must visit safari destination. Hello, Elizabeth. Are you still here? I am. I am with you. I'm with you. Okay. Bene has got that. So, uh, safari destination and this destination is in the northern part of Benin and it is 12 hours by road from Cotonou to Panjari where we've got the uh, safari uh, tourism site of Benin 12 hours to tell you how big we are <laughs> wow that, that's serious <laughs> Yeah, twelve hours well, by I'll, road. You know that Ola, if you live in Accra for Benin, um, the maximum you can spend on the road is about seven or eight hours. So if you yeah, like six to hours. The city, then that's. Hello. Hello, Ola. Can you I didn't me? get. I I'll, can hear you now. Yes. What you I said? said. What I said was, I know mm. when you live Accra for Benin. Is about yes. Drive. Yes. Yes. Telling me that you have a, a city within the city, and you have to exactly twelve hours on road to get there. Then wow, I need to visit. Ex you need to you 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 need you need to visit to experience. You know, today the four hundred and about four hundred and uh, four hundred um West African uh, lions. We've got above 50% of vets. The 400 remaining West African lions, above 450, about 50% of it, they are all found in the Benin Safari Tourism site called Panjari. You need to visit. Wonderful. Okay, so my first question on this is that as West Africans, you have, we have mm -hmm. a so, how best do you work with the other countries, other country store operators to make their clients? Because if you live in Accra for Benin, you have to spend about seven hours on the road. It is that I, I know that there can be a tour package where you say that, okay, you are experiencing West Africa. And a tourist can use about seven days to experience West Africa. Like how most of us travel outside to go and experience other East. European countries or other countries, and we spend about seven days on the, on the tours. How best have you worked with other countries for operators to make this dream a reality? Because it needs to be a reality. But yes. there has to be the synergy between all the countries in West Africa and Africa as a whole to promote okay. tourism. Okay. Thank you so much once again, Elizabeth. When we started, when Gota was born 2009, immediately 2011, we were at World Travel Market London with the product we called Discover Benin and her neighboring countries. So this, we didn't want to just say West Africa because we know some people would not want to go to some places. So we just said with our neighboring country. So now we sold that package. In fact, that was where we, we met with Aquaba. And since that 2011 till today, we go every year to Aquaba. We come to Wazo in Ghana. And then almost all the West African um, uh, tourism, uh, tourism fairs, we are present with this package. We let them know that just in one tour, of course, we are not there yet what they have in East Africa where, you know, one visa, you visit all those places, Rwanda, Kenya, and Uganda. Here, it is not the case yet, but with the relationship we have with the borders, you know, from Nigerian border into Benin, Benin into Togo and Togo into Ghana. We're able to make you travel these four countries just in one single travel. 
without you having to say everything. Our protocol handles the border, everything. So our partners, even in Ghana, for instance, with uh, Mr. Donancy, we had when she had to, most of our travels into Nigeria and into here, even uh, individual travels and group. I remember the, uh, when um, our Ghanaians were coming to our power three years ago, thereabouts, all the way from the borders of Aflao, we were able to make them travel and then come into here and from here get to Nigeria. So it's to say that we are partnering, we, are, we go to this first to meet our colleagues and we exchange, we give them what we have and they also give us what we have. For instance, I know I've done packages into Ghana just because I met this my colleagues in this tourism um, fairs and they've also sold you know into Benin sometimes they stay in Ghana and they do the package they say Ola when we come to Kotonu they don't even come down we handle on ground and then we take them to the next border so we've we've been doing a lot synergy in um, you know um, at this phase and then taking the relationship to the next level after the phase that's wonderful. Hola. Can you hear me? Hola. Yeah. My name is Andrew. How are you? I am fine, Mr. Andrew. Is your airport open? Yes. Is your airport opened? Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew. Benin Airport is open for five international flights. We have regular flights. We have Air France flying into Cotonou and out five times a week. Turkish Airlines flying in three times a week. Tunis Airlines flying in once. Brussels Airlines flying in twice. And Ethiopian Airlines flying in three times. But be informed that they are all doing evacuation flights. Like you must have be a national of the country you are traveling to either in America or in the Europe, mm -hmm. everywhere before you can be carried. Okay, so it's not open to commercial flights now. No, it is purely um, regular flight. It's evacuation flight, but regular. You know, what we have in some places, they are not regular. They only program and then, you know, like chartered flight. But this one is regular every yeah, yeah you have it every week all right but um so and, andrew did i answer your question yeah i see him nodding so i'm sure <laughs> yeah. okay. okay okay thank you andrew well, what does it mean that it takes passing as well to the other country and then hey i i didn't get that all right. i didn't get that a little bit you said that it being regular doesn't mean that it takes passengers from Benin to the Ahu regions and then bring Beninois citizens back to Benin on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. What is happening right now is that uh, we've got also passengers from Nigeria who are, you know, stops as a lot of them are trying to fly back to their base and then one of the um one of the uh just one minute okay we had one of the uh journalists on tv ask the question to one of the officials um in one of the international events like Nigerians that are stopped outside and inside what do they do and they were told since Benin is operating, since their airport is open, you fly down to Benin and then use the land border to get back to Nigeria. And that's what is happening. We've been doing, like for the past two weeks, it's been, I can tell you, like we have a lot of, because we've got a lot of Nigerians that came back for either East Esmas or Easter and are trying to get back to either their work or their families, but they're stopped in Nigeria. So they're coming down here and we're making them fly out of Benin. All right. So Benin is not a passage point for most Nigerians to 
Yeah. Exactly. We have also people, I mean, coming in from abroad. We have Nigerians coming in from abroad, coming into Benin and then getting back to Nigeria through the land border. Though the major land borders are closed, but when it has to be, you know, because this is now like emergency, you're not going for business, you're getting back to your destination, they are allowed to pass. Okay, so a special dispensation is given for people like that to be able to come to the land borders. Hey, I didn't get that again, he said. Social dispensation is given to people like that to pass through the land borders, even though it is not open to major traffic. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Once you have your passport and you're, you're able to prove that you're just going to fly out or flying in, it is okay. Thank you. That's what we've been doing. That's why we are the office. <laughs> Thank you, Ola. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yes, I see Ahmed online. And as I said, when you were talking about the adventure tour, Ahmed was looking on his map. He so, <laughs> should look for Dasa. <laughs> Hello, Ahmed. <laughs> In every <laughs> your map when yeah. talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was just thinking how far it is from uh, the the new city itself. Yeah. I, I didn't get that. Uh, yeah, I said uh, I was just checking how far it is from the new city itself. Uh -huh. yes. oh, oh. Okay, okay, no, it, it's not the no, city, it's the yeah. Benin Republic. No, no, I mean from the capital, uh, from Cotonou, sorry. Mm. Okay, Cotonou, Cotonou, yeah. Yes. It's on the yes. normal day, three hours, but you know, when there's traffic, we can do four hours. And then you go to the hills. I think I shared, I shared it, Elizabeth, if you allow, I, I, I shared it, you know, maybe we can say, share it later, where you're able to climb the 431 meters um, high mountain, I mean, uh, hills, and wonderful experience. That's where you have, we've got the hippopotamus, hippopotamus of Benin. That's where you've also got, We've got the Waragashi market and a lot of things. In fact, let me not. <laughs> well, 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 if you have videos of it, send it to us. We'll publicize it on our social media platform. You can advertise Benin. Oh, great. Thank you so much. I, we need to do it. I have, we need I've always sent it to, I, I've always shared it on the Accra Wazer group, on the, um, Oh, women in tourism group, you know, like every week, all these packages. I'm going to shout, I'll send to you all the because we do every Sunday evening. We do, uh, we try to, you know, let our clients know that we are still alive. We're not dead with the COVID. So we get a destination and then we interview. Um, even yesterday, we interviewed the, the queen. You know, when you talk about Amazons of Africa, Amazon in Africa, we have the ones of Ethiopia, and then the second one, the only two is in Benin, where we had at one point the warriors, the lady warriors, um, the, the queen, Hangwe. We had her, you know, rule Benin for three years. So a lot of history around that. So we interviewed uh, one of our descendants yesterday, and it's what will be airing this Sunday from eight o'clock. On our, on our, I mean, what discovered the wonders of Benin. <laughs> to you, I'm just falling in love with Benin for sure. <laughs> Thank you. We've got. Hello. You have all these things in Benin, but it is not known. I'm telling you, Elizabeth. Do you know that since the history of Benin till date? Benin is that country that I've never had any political issue regarding to, you know, I don't want to, <laughs> what we all know of. You know, Benin is that country just with 11 million, you know, our population. Once you cross the border of Nigeria or from every other place, you can be outside 3 a.m., even at 3, 4 a.m., you are still able to go to restaurants, eat, our bikes are walking 24 hours. You come back, you come down at any park, you are lifted to your destination if you're not driving and safe. 
our beaches, you're able to stay at our beaches till six time. You know, that, that, we, it, that this noise, we've been trying to make it, but like, it, it, it's very funny, but this time we're really determined with wonders of Africa and everything, people will begin to discover Benin has got it. You know, everybody just thinks what they talk about in Benin is voodoo. Yeah. Voodoo is just one part, you know, it's not, you know, it's not everybody that talks about voodoo. It's just like what, when we talk about tourism to China and even our normal Paris. You go to Paris, what you see is that to a felt which is made of iron. Whether you're a Muslim, you're a whatever, voodoo, voodoo, Buddhism, anything, you are Christian, you're able to go to the to a felt. So that's what Benin is becoming. What in, if not because of this pandemic, this um, independence, which is going to be on the 1st of August, we are to, we are to unveil our mark. Benin mark is not voodoo. It's something else that you'll be discovering in a few days. And this is to tell you that we've got a lot of stories to tell. African Park is handling Benin National Park. That's Panjari. This Panjari, you know how it is, like when Mr. Ikechi will say, others telling our story. The only time they talked about Panjari was when that incident last year, you know, the two French people, you know, the whatever. But at the end of the day, thank God they were found. But thank God that issue helped us now better market our safari destination. It is huge. Just at the end of the day, it's also on our, on our Facebook page and our Instagram page, what you're able to, to do at the Safari National Park. Then the beaches, we've got waterfront that is unbelievable. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I did everything. Ola, 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 Ola. All, all, all what you've talked about, are you speaking about Ghana? Oh, about the movie, because we have all this again. We have all I'm this again. I'm speaking about Benin, our own Benin, and not Ghana. <laughs> Ahmed, you no, can because speak. we have honestly, honestly, we have all all this in here. You can go out in Ghana at at three a.m. You have lovely beaches. We have lovely. Exactly. With regards no, to no. the timing, the timing that's at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in Beni, I relate with Ola. I remember on uh, after my wedding, my honeymoon, I went to Benin. But seriously, wow. I, didn't, I didn't know about all these uh, tourist attractions. But I went. Oh. And we left Accra quite late. We got to Benin oh. at 2 a.m. And the city was so calm. I was like, ah, <laughs> seriously, where am I? It was calm, but you could see uh, motorbikes on the road. At all times, 247. There were a lot of lights on the streets. It was yeah. so lively, but I mean, and I asked myself, uh -huh. I had a perception about the inn. Well, yeah, my, mom, my, my mom even told me that, hey, as you're going, when you get there and someone gives you a broom to sweep, don't take it. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in Benin. So, as I was going, <laughs> That's the only thing they know about Benin, but we're ready. We're out to tell the story otherwise. <laughs> it's only who do people think they come to do here. No, I don't even do that. But I've got stuff that people are coming back for. Don't worry, I'll send you all the things. We've got it on our website. I mean, on our Facebook, Instagram page. I'll send it to you, Lizbeth. I would be glad for that. Okay. Um, okay. So let's... Um, contributions from our guests and then i'll give uh, cleo a chance to also put in her thoughts we'll be closing we'll be ending the program very soon so from andrew ola you are a genius for real ola you are making me excited here in a oh <laughs> <laughs> travel. hello madam ola is there any way i can get your contact for more business also to get flight from Benin. I'm in Nigeria. So um, okay. also, um travels contacts is in the chat box. Kindly pick it up and then send her a hi. Yeah. Then yeah, yeah. I, I I've seen I've seen it. I I I'll, I'll, I'll write him. Okay. I've I've copied it. I'll write him. 
then we have Selena Boampo. Wow, I never knew Benin was that excited. <laughs> Seriously, I also didn't know. All right, Andrew says, oh, <laughs> excitement. Uh, great, we'll contact. Oh, don't. Oh, okay. So from okay. Elegu, he'd like to contribute. And then we'll give Cleo a chance to input her thoughts and then her concluding remarks with regards to what we've discussed here today. Ola, kindly be preparing your concluding remarks as well. Okay. Um, Jay Elegu. I can talk now. Okay, my name is Gelego Alago. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm a tourist and um, I'm also an airline captain. And in my brain, I think I have a travel agency running in my head, but I still haven't gotten to start it yet. <laughs> but um, I've listened to everybody, and it's obvious that um, you, 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 had, you really had a good reason for calling this meeting, and the topic was very appropriate. Look at Benin, just right next to Nigeria. It's right next to Ghana. And nobody knows all these places that she's talking about. And I'm sure she doesn't know all the places that are in Ghana. I'm sure you don't know all the places in Nigeria as well. So it means that this energy thing you're talking about, we really need to package individual countries and put them together as a West African hub. Probably have a website where you have the different um, tour, tours in the different countries and the different players in those countries so that if a tourist anywhere in the world say, oh, I want to go to West Africa and there's a popular West Africa website, they can know exactly what to do. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, I've also seen that um, short distance, why do we have to spend 12 hours to go to a place? Um, I just, I'm just looking through, you have airfields in Benin. Well, what's that place that you called, was it Jude? That's um, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, do you have any airfield around it? Like a airstrip or something? Because it shows that there are quite a no. few airstrips. Yeah. Oh, yes, no. we, 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 we have. We have. From, from. So it means that, I mean, if I'm a tourist, I've been a tourist. I mean, I go to places, I travel a lot on my own. But why would I want to spend? 12 hours on the road going to one place when I have only three or four days in, in that country. If there's a very quick way of getting there, and then at the same time from that location, you can take me to a uh, Volta Dam, maybe with a small, you know, so you don't need, you don't need a four, five, six seater aircraft that can take me to Volta Dam or maybe an amphib amphibious um, um, airplane that can land in water as well. Land, land by a beach or something like that. You know those small, small aircraft that are not too expensive yeah. to run. And then maybe we need, if everybody come together, we may able to invest in something like that and actually open up West Africa more than what we're doing now. Because I think we haven't even started. Then we need to write the history. All this history I'm talking about, we need to have it written down. We need to study it. We need to um, sell it, even stay, sell online. Because we need a story. There has to be a story. You know, when you go abroad, when they one small thing, they will give you a long story of the whole thing. That's what they will, the tourists like. That's what I want to know. I mean, even if I piece of cloth, I want to know what the story of this piece of cloth is, how they started, who started it, all those kind of stories, you know? So we really need to get together, as you just rightly said. And maybe, I and mean, governments are very difficult to deal with, but we can try using the governments to get. Um, some of the development and information, and then we all try to work with one another, one way or the other. I mean, today with all the internet and everything, we can even be working together every day. It doesn't really um, matter. Everything is online now, so we can actually do that together. That's my contribution. I think that um, there's a possibility of having, um, investing even in an aircraft. If we all organize ourselves, we, have, we know the kind of volume of traffic we are going to have, then we can now look for an appropriate aircraft that can be hopping from Lake Oke to 12 o'clock, we take you to Benin, go to the center. From there, uh, in the evening, we end up in the nine club in uh, Osu, I mean, Osu in Kona, <laughs> you know, something like that. And then the next day, we have, you know, something like that. That's what I like to, as a tourist, that's what I like, you know? 
to be able to experience different things, different places at the same time. You know, so we can do that if we really organize ourselves. We can do it. We don't have to wait for our governments. We can all start doing it, and then maybe later on the, the governments can come when they see that uh, um, there's something to um, um, support or something like that. All right. Thank you very much, sir. So synergy really needs yeah. to play a part in everything that we do. And for our tourism yeah. industry to grow, we have to do it together. We have to. You can't do it alone. It's not possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Because I can have a customer that is just coming from, like, for, okay, his customer is coming for the voodoo. Because from his information, that voodoo is what he wants to go to. Yeah. But then, if you now say, okay, after the, because the voodoo, the voodoo may be just two or three days. I don't know how long it takes. But mm -hmm. when there's time, you say, oh, you can quickly hop across to Accra. There's something in Accra. Or there's something in Nigeria. There's something. They will really love to have that experience. So they, they will come with that mindset. If you have all those information down, some of them will even map out where and where they want to see. After the voodoo, they want to go there, they want to go there, they want to go there. Those that can have the disposable income to move around. You know, so we really need to be together. And Elizabeth, you I can see you have organization ability. Yes, from this is the second thing I've, I've, I've seen that I see that you can you you can actually draw people together, but you have to draw them together and hold them. Don't let them go anywhere. Right, hold them together you. and get any information. So All we right, leave that to you, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. <laughs> For me, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm information. If you want any information, research anywhere, any country, anywhere. I have people on almost everywhere, so I can get the information. All right, sir. So, uh, sir, I have any difficulty? I like to find solutions to problems. So, when there are problems, <laughs> hit me. I will. I All right, thank you. So, I've noted your email address. I will be getting in touch with you soon. Thanks for your contribution. <laughs> okay, Cleo. You've been quiet for a while now. Yes, I've been enjoying listening, learning. I think that's what tourism is about. Even if we're not on ground, even if COVID is around, even if we're online or in a meeting room, we can always tour, travel, learn, discover. So uh, I've been just doing my experience, enjoying. <laughs> Sometimes it's the best side of the thing. <laughs> oh, um, but it's been wonderful. Do, yeah. That, um, Synergy, synergy is the way further, you know? Um, we all know that um, we have all of these things that try to teach us, life tries to teach us that if you wanna go somewhere in a sustainable way, if you wanna go really far, then it's better to go with other people. But if you're just in an impact or nothing, then you can just take your two legs and run away. We're lucky enough to have all of the actors in the tourism industry that are doing synergy, um, all members of a consortium called um, CTM. Poor guys, everybody working together to, to change things and see how we could all stand on one ground and make the government understand what we need and also contribute as a private sector. Um, I think Ola and I were impatient to have you guys in Benin. Uh, um, this very small but extraordinary country. We're so extraordinary that we just needed to be like that, you know. Um, that's how God decided to do the thing. Uh, you can experience all kinds of things, whether it's the, the yesterday but today's history of the kingdom of Dahomey that has traveled worldwide and is one of the very few countries in the whole wild world where they had a reign over 300 years and had an impact integrating all kinds of cities and all kinds of places. Um, you will learn the Vodou, the Vodou religion, which is no longer something that's interior to Benin, but has been taken worldwide um, during the slavery era and now has even been modernized. And you can see the differences, the influences of the Brazilians, the Portuguese, the different people that we have. Uh, you can also discover the, the homeland of Christian Leture, who is the founder of Haiti, who came from Benin. You have all kinds of stories and experiences that you can live. 
or you can go to Gambia, which is our stilt village, um, people who needed to learn how to hide and to adapt themselves and are living there till today in this modern world. We're here to help you discover whether it's nature, whether it's Kotonou by night, if, if, if that's the kind of experience you want, if it's the dance. Benin is one of the countries that has the blessing to now be a modern country, but yet have a great space for our culture and our traditions, respecting the opening up, but still keeping what is dear to us. So we will be more than happy to have you. Uh, we promise that now we'll start making more noise so that people can understand and learn more about Benin and know that if they're into the Vodou, Vodou will be there to welcome them. But if they're looking for other kinds of experiences, then we're here to show them how, if you go to a city, um, uh, Port Novo, our capital city, you will see how things were organized by our kingdoms before colonization came. You would see our local CIA or FBI, how the <laughs> king was there with people during the night, um, this lady who was the calendar, who was helped the king to manage his farming, his going to war and everything before we had the Roman calendars that came into our everyday life. So you would see until today, you have different things that are sacred to us. And even if we have now modernized or more civilized families, we always go back to those origins. So it's year in, year out. No matter when you want, we're here, and there are all kinds of things that you can enjoy. And what we love doing is finding answers to your particular questions, which is something that we are here for. And it will be more than, more than a pleasure for us to have it. And to connect to West Africa, of course, we're all working on that, um, whether it's tour operators, whether it's tour guides. As you know, I'm Vice President of Administration of Watka. So it's about now bringing ourselves together and having tourists have this experience where when you get to one country, you can have a guide that can take you and experience you all through West Africa, depending on where you want to go, giving phone calls and working with the others. So the air companies, the hotels, the restaurants, to make sure that you're safe, you're going to get a great experience and that you have lovely people that will be around you to help you um, have this experience that you're looking for. So Thank you, Cleo. <laughs> that is very extensive. I mean, listening to yourself and Ola. Thank you for this opportunity, Elizabeth. Um, Seriously, you're doing all kinds of, I, know, I think I need to the borders are open. We'll need to have Ghana. So thank you. Thank you for this experience. Thank you to everybody. Um, the only thing I would now ask as a closing remark is that we all keep uh, our eyes focused, our intentions focused on moving forward so that together, um, West Africa has so much to sell compared to other parts of Africa that are all unique in their ways. But I do believe that we're not, we're not doing, giving the greatness to West Africa as we could, but working together and selling different things like, you know, the great store of Kwame Nkrumah, everything that Ghana has to sell, the different things that Togo could sell, what Benin has in unique, what Nigeria has in unique, that would be something that, wow, people would be ready to travel for. And then the air companies, we could price them so that tourism will be a little bit easier. West Africa would be more accessible. companies would start helping us. And then we would all really feel the move, you know, of, of everything, all of this effort that we've been putting into the tourism for the past year. Um, may all of us stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cleo. So it needs to be a movement. A movement of togetherness. Movement. Yes. All right. So uh, from Ahmed, he's asking a question for Cleo. How do we compete with the other regions in Africa? But I'll come, I'll come back to you. So Cleo, uh, be thinking about that question. I'll come back to you. I want Ola to give her closing remarks. And then Ola, before okay. you give closing remarks, I'd like to ask, how many active sites do you have in Benin and how is local patronage? Does the government, is the government also involved in promoting tourism in Benin? Thank and you so much. Your concluding thank you. as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Lisbeth. Um, like you said, before I go for the concluding remarks, I will answer your question, but I want to answer Mr. Gelegu. Yeah. It was really very wonderful hearing you, Captain. Thank you so much. I used to be an aerostat. I used to fly. So 
I mean, having a captain, wow, I'm happy here, all family. So, Captain, um, I want to let you know, you talked about aviation. If we have, you know, like airlines, local, I mean, connectivity, you know, flying and all that. Yes, Benin has got ABT, you know, Air Benin Travels, airlines, I mean, Air Taxi Benin. We're able to take you from Kotonou to Panjari, where we have that safari tour. Instead of doing 12 hours, you do two hours flight. And then you visit, you can come back the same day if you're in the park. We also have the helicopter that is able to take you. If you want to fly to visit uh, the park, you're able to do that. Uh -huh. And then also we have that flight to the northern park, Paraku. And then we don't have a DASA right now, but DASA, Paraku is not too far from, uh, from, from DASA. So you can actually land either in Paraku or Netitengu or then now that Panjari. So is, we're, say, we're, we're saying it's not, we're not fully there yet. We want to have something like what we have in Nigeria where you have different airlines. You could choose this one because that's when it becomes very competitive. So we're looking forward to getting in there and we're working. And then now I'm screaming about the government. Do you know that, I don't know if you, if you watched it, Benin president, present president, Mr. Patrice Talon, the moment he came among the seven uh, actions that he highlighted the moment he came on board was tourism. Top on his list, tourism. He's invested, as I talked to you right now, the museums we've got by the seaside of Wida. We've got Club Med coming in, taking about about 20 something hectares that is going to be what we call in French village de vacances, like holiday, holiday cities. That's what we're building by the beach side of Wida. We've got new hotels coming in, all these things, I mean, cushioned by the government. If you come into Benin, like some of you that visited last year for Gota 10 years anniversary from Ghana, from Nigeria, and Togo. I mean, the road, if you come in today, you will miss your way because there, is, there are more than 40 roads being, I mean, like they're going on the construction as I'm talking to you now, accessibility into all most of these tourism sites. The government is all out, the new president, I mean, the president, the present president is all out, he's, 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 um, awarded a lot of countries, administration has awarded a lot of contracts where we have like Cleo talked about Port Novo. We've got the gigantic museum ongoing right now. We've got the mark of Benin, you know, that they're setting up for our independence. We've got even the, the Gambier, where the Gambier <laughs> Cleo talked about, we call, is actually called the Venice of Africa. That Gambier, some of you that visited last year, you went there. If you go there now, it is a different fall game. A lot of things being put in place. So our government is, you know, is what I don't even want to say 50%, is like 70% behind us. Like he's put outside the Ministry of Tourism, he set up, you know, an agency that is working directly hand in hand with him to push every program that they are putting in place. It's not like, you know, you have to go through the ministry, you know, long protocols. That is what we are having right now in Benin. You can imagine a president that came on, the first thing he did, he took six international consultants to be able to work with the, I mean, the, the people working on site to make sure that the interests of all the countries they want to cover are put in place while they are developing the site. So just in New York distance time, Mr. Geleku, you will see that Benin government is all out. That is the top of this list because Benin, we don't, all we've got is our port, you know, seaport, the importation and all that. And, you know, we've got some agricultural products, cotton and all that, and, and, and that importation, you know, just like that. But, he has seen that the next thing to do, the lowest hanging fruit is tourism. So 
He's invested so much, and not just in story. This is my 21 years in Benin as a Nigerian, though today I'm a Beninese. I have never seen this kind of, you know, transformation. In less than two years, you come into Cotonou by night, you feel you're landing in America. So our government is all out. Having said all that, I want to stop making you dream. I want my closing remark will be, it's hard time for us to complement each other in Africa and not compete with each other. We may have the same culture, what we have in Nigeria, we have it here in Benin and in Ghana. But like Cleopat said, there are some of those things that are unique to ourselves. Let us synergy and market it. I market my new market, I help you market yours, and then we become a better Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Ola. It was <laughs> you. Wow. We, to to we can spend the whole day listening to you. <laughs> My pleasure. I want each and every one of us to have so that we'll be able to promote our countries, West Africa and Africa as a whole. Yes. Uh, coming from Carigo Travels, Madam Olama, please, it would be nice for us to have a tour in Benin. Can you put it together and inform us? This is getting oh. You know, we have to see ourselves and show the world what we got in Africa. And, and those are the positive feedbacks uh, we love getting after a break. All members of the state um, stakeholder chain. And then from Andrew, Ola, are you the owner or CEO of Benin? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Someone who was going to buy the need. I mean, the person who would shout the money to you like now. I have totally. I have to take a bus. I to enjoy all the rights that you have spoken about. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'm grateful that you were able to come on the show today. All right. So I'll, I'll give yeah. you a chance to answer and then I think we'll call it a day. Hello, Cleo. Hello, Elizabeth. Yeah, so Ahmed asked the question on how do we compete with the other regions in Africa? Looking at, the sh uh, looking at how government supports in our sectors or looking at share government support in our sectors. I didn't get the question right. Ahmed, is it possible to ask the question yourself? Cleo, just a minute. Let me give um, Ahmed a chance to ask the question. Hi, good afternoon again. Yeah. Good afternoon again. Good afternoon, Ahmed. Yeah, uh, Cleo, this, uh, I have this question for you. You know, we all know how much uh, other regions in Africa invest in the tourism sector. Looking at uh, being North Africa, east or south. Here at the west uh, side of this continent, we always find it difficult when it comes to government support, when it, when it comes to money issues and then uh, making sure that, uh, you know, we have, to, we have to do things to upgrade our tourism. We have to make it more and more attractive for people to come to West Africa. I, th I think West Africa is the most de deprived when it comes to the, to the number of, uh, of uh, international tourists that comes to Africa. So what do you think can be done? Because we have tried everything with our governments. We see, we, we hear a lot of talks, we see a lot of plans, but uh, what is done on the ground is very little to mention. Okay, thank you. Cleo? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think the, the best way to move forward is that for the private sector to take responsibility to, to take the small power means actions at our level and to start pushing things. Government will come in when they see that this is serious and that there's no way back. I mean, there, there, there is either asking them to do it and they being nice enough to do it, or it's bringing them to see that there's no way through. So if we have tried that and it's not working, then we need to see how can we start showcasing. And like I said a while ago, if we start bringing together our uniqueness and start branding West Africa together as one and getting interest 
for more and more people to come, then easily we're going to have air companies who are now going to get interested in it because it's the what is, what is in it for us. They're now going to have a better impact. We're all standing as one, and now we can start getting it somewhere. And gradually, it will change. Are we going to compete with the other regions? For me, it's forgetting about the other regions, focusing, uh, focusing on what we have. What do we have? Building that, and many people will now see that, okay, there are things that we can come and do. I believe that there are people who come from Asia, all around the world to go to Kenya, because for them, it's the only place they can go, or go to Africa for a safari because it's the only place they can go. And when you take the different countries in West Africa, our cultures, our traditions that are living today, I truly believe that it's just that people should get the information so that we can do it. So for me, it's continuing by even um, initiatives such as this uh, discussion, this online conference, getting people who have insight to share the information and starting somewhere, but somehow. The government will come in at a moment. We in Benin here, as, as the private sector, we had to come together, we had to sit down, we had to now say, let's forget about the differences, let's look at national interests. What are we heading for? Let's discuss. Let's be among ourselves, make things happen and fix things, and then the government spot, saw that this is serious. These are now actors. So when we call them, the government is obliged now to answer us. And because they know that we have been taking actions ourselves and we have the proof of it, now we can now have a serious discussion where it's no longer, yes, we're going to do it. Don't worry, everything's going to be okay. But this is what we can do now. And now we also, we can say, no. So I believe that we, we just need to start somewhere, no matter what we have, no matter how small it can be. And by all of us joining hands together, we're going to be able to move forward and have government play their role. Thank you very much, Cleo. We need to focus on what we have and tell the story as it is. Let's build our brand. And that is what matters now. My take home today would be, we need to start telling our story. We need to market it well, and we need to communicate it rightly. Without communication, without marketing, without telling our story, no one would know what we have. Like what you guys have done today, Cleo and Ola, you've been so wonderful. You've sold Benny. And anyone listening to today's panel discussion would know that yes, there is something that Benny has that has not been marketed. Exactly. So they need to travel to Benin once borders are opened to experience it. And all the things you spoke about, I believe that the experience is what matters. We need to start removing it from our minds eye that Benin is just Buddhism. But Benin, I'm telling you. a lot of it. The Amazon, wow. That is so beautiful. And believe you me, when Bob opened, I would visit Benin. And oh, I would thank you. I get in touch with, with Cleo to experience what you have told me today. Because I love tourism with a passion. And I love the way you guys have explained. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have sold Benin to us. Thank you so much, everyone. Olama, Alvinis Ojuku. From Gota, my pleasure. Cleopatra, um, Kuny <laughs> Don't worry, we'll have a lesson. We'll have a lesson for that weird name when you're when, when you're in Benin. <laughs> when, <laughs> Benin. <laughs> Benin. <laughs> 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 for you. I guess. Thank you. Part of the Aviator Diaries Series Four today. We are so grateful. As I said, Aviator is all about bridging the gap between aviation and tourism. And if we can have the synergy between countries, between tour operators, to sell West Africa, to sell Africa as a whole out there, we need to put our continent on the maps when we are talking tourism. And it will start from us. So let's get in touch. 
contacts have been shared, get in touch with each and every one and let's uh, start uh, with the business. As Captain said, we can all do it together. So it starts from now. Thank you so much and I hope to see you next week on our next series. It's a bye-bye. <laughs> Okay.